Hello, Declan Welsh and the Decadent West. Welcome Hello. to Truth yeah. Sessions. Woo. 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 Uh, thank you for playing this evening. It was really good. Thank I really you. enjoyed it. Um, do you want to go around and say your names and just introduce yourselves and what you do? Hi, I'm Decadent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Declan, I sing and play guitar. Hey, I'm Duncan, I play guitar. Ben, and I play bass. I'm Murray, and I play drums. Nice. Also, I'm going to do a wee <laughs> introduction, by the way. We have all these flight boards here. It's dr dry gate flight boards, our core flights. Apart from the very end one, it's different. But um, these are for you guys to drink. So you Thank can, you very much. At the end, you can let me know what your favourite one is. Okay. Why is it called a flight board? That's a great question. And I've worked here for a year. it takes you on a journey. Hey. Yeah, it takes you on a journey. Hey. A flight <laughs> through the dry gate core beers. It's really great. Um, anyway, so... I've noticed in a few of your music videos, which is absurd, no fun, you all make a lot of characters up and it's quite funny and interesting to watch. Has anyone got any experience in acting or done any theatre, film? <clears throat> like, not us personally, but you have a, little, a thing. A little tiny bit, bits and pieces, but not anything like proper professional. Um, High school drama. I <laughs> from myself. Nativity plays, primary school. Yeah, yeah. Was, what did you play in the Nativity? I was one of the three kings oh, really? in primary one, yeah. Damn. More, obviously. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, because it's yeah the name. Yeah, yeah. Good. They're inventive. Of I was the best. <laughs> yeah, I was the captain of the ship in Dick Whittington when I was in P one. Oh, <laughs> nice. I, I peaked early. <laughs> yeah, way too soon for us. Yeah, it's all happening in primary one. No other. I know. Else. I think. I think we all just like like. Can we make each other laugh? I mean, that's like I think that's probably the main thing, and we've worked with, you know, a quite a lot of like dead talented directors for our videos and I think that you don't want to take it too seriously I mean like I, I think that you know you want to hit a balance but I enjoy funny videos I enjoy when bands have a laugh with it so I think that's probably what our aim is, uh, has been with stuff like No Fun and Absurd I mean Absurd was a, was a good laugh um, you, the funniest part of that was uh, Ben sadly couldn't make the actual shoot down Liverpool when we shot it but we kind of did a, a, a kind of after the fact shoot and uh, I don't know what the hell happened to... We, we honestly took about 17 different videos of Ben doing all these cool different things, loads of different costume changes. And I don't know if the guy that we sent them to just got, like lost all the files, but the same image of Ben going like this appears, I think, seven times. I spent, sort of I spent an ungodly amount of time filming. Um, <laughs> and that's what was produced, that one little um, clip. That so, you just... Yeah. Did they, put, did they put in more? After I was we asked to do this, sure I, could, I didn't see a single other show. Yeah, we had you as like a, a commentator, and we had you as like a news anchor, yeah. and a bunch of different weird stuff, and they didn't, they didn't Matt, use any of it. Could, could have taken off there. I know, I know. You were let down. You were held back. I was censored. It was nothing to do with performance as well. Your performance is excellent. <laughs> Nice. So let's steer a wee bit away from the arts and go down to the academic group, uh, route. So Duncan and Declan, you both studied law. Um, it's clear that that's like influenced in your music, such as Different Strokes that you released in 2019. But when you were studying, did you see yourself going down the path of music? Definitely not at the start. Yeah, I mean... I think we, we both basically always played in bands since we were like yeah. 14, like separately, obviously, like because we've only met at uni. But um, yeah, I I don't know. I, I think you probably could speak more about the kind of, I guess, learning legal theory, I guess, kind of gives you an underpinning. And I don't know. It's like, a, it, it's critical thinking, isn't it? It's the yeah. same. It's not unique to law. It's, it's, you know, I think getting a bit of time to think about stuff. And it's not even, you know, specifically having to study at university. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think you can get it a bunch of different ways, but. What you need does is it gives you four years where you can just think, try and form your own ideas, learn some stuff. You know, even even from music, it was friends, mutual friends of ours in, a, in, in, in our course that kind of put me on a few bands that ended up being really influential. So I think that the, the critical thinking side of it, the idea of like not taking things at face value, I think is a really useful skill no matter what you do. And I think for songwriting, it allows you to maybe like have a bit of a different perspective or try and communicate ideas that maybe aren't, you know, the default thing to hold. So... Shout out Chris McCorkendale and, yeah. Kenneth, and Kenneth Norrie. I was going to say Therese O'Donnell as well. Um, yeah, the, uh, it, was a, it was a really nice, it was like a fairly progressive law school that kind of taught you a bunch of stuff that you would never have got uh, in other places. Like even the thing of um, human nature, like being something that is actually like a total misnomer. And anyone who studies human nature to any extent, it, it can't really put their finger on what it is. But you have a lot of people going, 
that's human nature, so you can't carry work. And you're like, that's not like no one. It's kind of the same as gender. It's like as soon as you know stuff about it, you become incredibly reticent to actually like commit to saying it's this one thing because it's really complicated. Human nature is incredibly complicated, and I think law was really good for that because that's pretty much what I did my dissertation on was the idea that um, if you're trying to define human nature as self-interested, you can't because altruism exists. If you're trying to just even describe human nature as like rational, it's nonsense because people make decisions against their own interests all the time. So I think I think it was a really, I enjoyed it a lot. I really liked getting a bit of time to think about stuff. Everything's a social construct to summarise, basically. That's true. Essentially. Everything is. It's crazy. Yeah. And Murray, you study too. Yeah, I'm just about to finish. Yeah. So I studied business. I've got like two months left. And I cannot wait to never <laughs> do it again. How Everyone keeps feel? asking me, they're going, are you going to do like a PhD or a master? So I'm like, nah. No. 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 And ben made, this, ben made the sensible decision and, and started to earn money. Yeah, I just got a job. Which, which He's got was a job. It's really catching up on. So Ben now has, you know, years of experience doing a very useful job as opposed to being able to say something that sounds quite interesting about human nature. So it's up to you what you think is more valuable. <laughs> the economy definitely thinks what Ben's offering is though, I think. <laughs> But again, it's a social construct, you know, yeah. what is right. What do you what do you work as? I work in IT and, and that's too. we won't go any further than <laughs> <laughs> um, That's good. Yeah. You could you could have said anything there. Yeah, yeah. And, and you yeah. still stuck with IT. He's an I want to, I want to at least <laughs> be honest man. But I want the viewers to work here anymore. No. <laughs> you want to be a real person. What, what would your what would your dream job be if you this? No. <laughs> IT still? No. <laughs> Do you find any of the IT like helps with like um, stuff? See, to, like, I don't know. Like, there's a there's like some boring parts of being a band of like being organised. You need to be even t places at the right time and all that sort of stuff. And between the th like the four of us, I'm probably the most organised. But that's but that's also like a burden that just falls on me. Uh, yeah, we expect you. Um, there's an ex expectation but then it's you know it's fine like there's a bit of you know it's it's fun it's also not fun but yeah in terms of like writing music or like doing anything no nah, i wouldn't say it is uh helping no if anything it's no doing license. the opposite <laughs> yeah. yeah oh well a nice uh collective of different things going on here yes cool um, so my next question is you guys played the last ever Teen the Park mm -hmm. how did that feel that's pretty mad and is there any festivals that are on your bucket list that you haven't done yet uh, it was a really it was a good experience so Murray unfortunately wasn't yeah, with us at that there. time um, he but it's, it's, it was a, a, I wasn't we invited to, we, got to play, we got to play Transmit all together in this in this current version the last Teen the Park was good it came very early for us and I think it's a strange I think Almost everyone that works in the arts of some description, like the kind of story that you're told is that, that one thing will happen and then you will work in the arts or you will be famous or you're whatever it is that your your name is. And I think that like that was a really cool experience um, that kind of probably set us on a wee path to, to kind of incrementally getting more stuff. But in that same summer, I went, I think Palestine and down to London Fashion Week and we got like a like our tune do what you want when a poem form ended up being kind of presented on that so it was a bunch of cool stuff that happened there Teen the Park being kind of a dream for all of us I think from a really young age mm. um, the actual gig was great and the most Lovely. important the, like it, we got to see the lapels play that Teen the Park which was yeah. cool. it was also the year that someone stole an ATM <laughs> that was great they stole from the Teen the Park yeah. Yeah. stole a bonk machine yeah a good question <laughs> Really good question. I mean, probably drive, drugs. Gumption. And they just drugs, they, think, yeah. they found a way to get it from the main site to their tent, and the idea of someone with an ATM in their tent in the main festival campsite. So that was crazy, isn't it? Go up. good, good on them. It's a wee bit iconic. As long as nobody's, as long as nobody's getting hot. Nick, <laughs> Nick money for your bank, all you want. <laughs> just a bank. They nick money from us. So. In 2019, you said that it was like every Glasgow band's dream to play the Barrows, and oh, then yeah. last year you sold it out. Yeah, that's that was, also that another really thing. Nice. Um, I think that like that whole thing was really cool, and I mean like it's cool from the day that you arrive and know that it's sold out until you finish. The entire three months leading up to it, you're just like three people gonna buy tickets. No uh -huh. one's gonna come. Oh my god, no, no one's gonna come. Um, but I think what was good is that like we were ready for that. Like we we didn't feel ner I, well, obviously some nerves, but I don't think any of us were like we're incapable of doing this. This is too much. Like we we did it and we did really well. Everyone had a really good time. Um, and I think that it's just another uh, another very, you know, nice thing that 
that you can point to as a as a mark that your tunes are connecting with people because because any other measure of, any other measure of success I think is like fleeting and, and daft but like that's a reminder that like oh, two thousand folk in your home city or or, or want to come and see and, and sing every word and that was lovely and it was also good to add three members oh, to the absolutely. band which got yeah. to actually flesh out a lot of stuff that you'd hear in recordings that we're not <laughs> physically capable of playing as a four piece like you know obviously because I hadn't added in the recording so. Uh, obviously, Paul, Joan, and Ankh yeah, did the, the, the other many, three many members layers. Of, of the decadent West that have uh, decided against um, being interviewed for <laughs> reasons of, for reasons of not being sure. <laughs> so you have to respect that. Um, but yeah, I, I totally agree that, that it filled out the sound massively, and it, and it just yeah, just that nice bunch of people as well. They, they, they do it with you know like everyone that was involved, you know, photographers, videographers, uh, every part of the team was really lovely, and we all did a really nice time. I think so. Mm. Yeah, and like I think people have. It meant something to people. You could see in the crowd, you know, and that's the nicest part about this is, is that like you can see in people's faces that like they've been waiting to hear this song for a bit, and then it means the world to them that they're doing it, which is, which is class. Well, that's class. And are you excited for the year? For, are you excited for the album? Have you got it all narrowed down? To it's done. Yeah. yeah. The things. Done. Nothing can be changed at this the, point. The amount really of times <laughs> that we've listened to that probably. I would genuinely say, yeah. like, over, like, 100,000 yeah. times, think, uh, like, think, individually combined. Yeah. Uh, I know I, I have oh, absolutely totally. rinsed it. Yeah. And you um, go from, like, going, exciting. this album's the best thing ever, to this is terrible, to, no, it's amazing again. No, yeah. not sure anymore. <laughs> yeah. All the emotions. It's and the best then, yeah, because you just, like, it, you hear it so many times. Yeah. It just sounds like nothing. You start hearing mistakes when they don't exist. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah. you hear yeah. the same mistakes, yeah. version back, and you've sent, like, draft 10 back to the producer, and they send it back, and you're like, I don't even know anymore. Like, I, I might be hearing something, I might be just going yes. slightly, like, <laughs> kind of, it becomes, yeah, it becomes very difficult to actually know what you're hearing on less than 155 of the track. But having listened to it fully recently a good few times in its entirety, I'm really, really proud of it. I think it's really good. I think it's, like, uh, kind of the music that we all wanted to make, and that's all you can kind of hope for. Um, and a couple of the ones that you didn't really expect to be singles ended up turning up. One of the ones we played today, I don't know why, mm-hmm. was never one that we, we all liked it, but it was like, oh, it'll be an album track, and then it came yep. back, and we're like, oh, this is a single. So I'm, I'm yeah, buzzing buzzing for people to hear it. Really excited for it to come out, and I we're very proud of it. All Killer, No Filler, basically. Yeah. Excited. All Killer, No Filler 2 from Sum 41 is the continuation of Sum 41's mm-hmm. legacy, essentially. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> But you all should take a break from listening to the album for at least a week, just yeah. to detox yeah. down and then listen to your I'm, I'm back on the side of it being amazing again. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Definitely. It always yeah. was. For sure. Um, yeah, I was mistaken. So, most of you guys are from, are you all from East Kilbride? No. 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 EK, no. Clarkston, EK, Bridge of Weir. Johnston, Bridge of Weir. Same thing. Same thing. So let's call it yeah. G- Paisley Freeze. Paisley, okay, Paisley yeah. Freeze. Because yeah. yeah. not many people have heard of those three places. Well, this is a question for the EK boys. Um, do you have any routes through EK that doesn't involve a roundabout? See, I don't drive, so it's probably a much less of an, a, a feature of my EK experience. <laughs> I just walked everywhere, but Ben, you, you, you were one of the first to get a car, so you've probably... What was it, the wee Honda Jazz? Was that the first car you had? M- my grand's. Your grand's Honda, Honda Jazz. Jazz. I mean, yeah. that, that does really well. That got us to, like, Bellodrum and stuff. Yeah. I'm seeing about a thousand island stare in Ben's eyes right now, like, of remembering EK roundabouts. <laughs> yeah. It's... What's your favourite roundabout in East Coast? It's got to be the very best of the EK uh-huh. roundabout. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, of course. The best of the... <laughs> Volume <Yeah>. four. <laughs> <laughs> you should write a wee book. Yeah. yeah. Write a song about it. Honestly, I think like... Texas beat us to it, Poland City. Oh, yeah. Really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Texas have got a tune about EK. Yeah. Oh, to defend East Kilbride slightly, Hamilton's just as bad. Oh, Hamilton is... To drive through is just in, incomprehensible. Just, just houses. So Flanagan, generally. Yeah. Flanagan, yeah, sure. hard to drive through. I love it because I'm from it, but I understand that. I understand why the tourism industry isn't booming in South Flanagan, <laughs> I can say that. I mean, Coatbridge still has the time capsule as a yeah. big, yeah, like, yeah. landmark. EK skating, that was every Thursday for me for a, a good portion of my childhood, learning how to skate and then falling a lot. <laughs> now everyone's doing it at Riverside in Glasgow. I know. I know. Might try and do it this summer, yeah. but I'm really bad at skating, so I don't know. Um, so, Declan, you are pretty open about speaking about mental health, mm-hmm. especially after lockdown. <coughs> you spoke about just like the burn of social anxiety and coming back into like the world that we're in. Um, do you have any coping mechanisms, or anyone else have any coping mechanisms when it comes to like feeling quite anxious in a social situation, or maybe just having a really crap day where your brain's been mean to you that you'd like to share? Um, 
I think that like it's frustrating because like I I I do think it's really individualised, and I think that you don't want to be saying you know well this will work for everyone because it's all super you know everyone's got different coping mechanisms and everyone's got different experiences of what anxiety is. It's not the same thing from person to person. For me. Um, creating is really, really helpful. I think that even if you don't plan to make a career out of this, if, or, or, or you don't, you don't want a career in the arts, you don't want. I still think doing something creative is just it's really helpful for for feeling good. I think exercise as well, as boring as it is, as simple an answer as it is, doesn't need to be walk, doesn't yeah. need to be running marathons. You know what I mean? You're totally right. It can be just getting out and moving about. And I think you know having people around you that like make you feel good about yourself is just the, the way that I've been luckiest. I think when things happen to you, I'm not really an island of a person. I think I need other people big time. And I think that the people around me, the three people here included, are, are incredibly supportive and, and really, it, it's a total privilege to have that. And I think that it's not impossible to find that. I think that a lot of people accept kind of people who don't make them feel very good about themselves. And I say accept as if many people have a choice, but relationships, friends, families, you should feel good being around people that, and, and if you, they're not then I don't think you owe them very much like I, I don't I think if people don't make you feel good I don't think you need to wait until maybe one day they will and I think that the thing that's been really helpful for me has been that support network of having people who just really like like you care about you and want you to feel good so in terms of dealing it by yourself I'm, I don't think I'm as strong a person as to be able to do that I think I've been incredibly lucky that I have a great family a brilliant partner and really good friends so um, if, if people in your life aren't, aren't making you feel good about yourself, that's, that's not like you don't owe them sticking about and, and putting up with that. It's, it's, it's as easy as that sounds, you know, I, I know there's plenty of situations in which that's walking away isn't viable, but the thing that's helped me is that I have people who are that and I'm incredibly lucky in that respect. So here's my 16 point plan for perfect mental health. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, you've covered pretty much everything I want to say. I mean, I meditate a lot and also... I just think remembering that like most people in this world are constantly at war with their own minds and realizing that, I mean, cliche is that you aren't alone in these things and therapy work, generally works as well. So that's also true. Yeah, especially when it comes to therapy, I've found in my experience, like, I think some people sometimes get a wee bit stressed and feel like they need to stick with one certain therapist, but like they're there for you to go, nope, you're not working with me, I'm going to move on to someone else. Or there's like different forms of therapy and stuff that you can just like switch to, so it's well, not I all th just... I think, I think if you have a therapist who's almost someone you can see something and see some of yourself, yeah. then it's very helpful. Like yeah. in my experience, you know, working with like, as a queer person, working with queer therapists has always been more effective because... I don't have to explain what grinder is and how that <laughs> works. <laughs> so that helps. Um, but yeah. The also only thing I would add to that is that helping other people helps you. Like it, it, I think that there's a really like kind of modern emphasis on like take care of yourself. And it's not that that's not important, but the easiest way to feel good about what you do in the world is by doing good. Like that, that's, that is, it's never wrong to think about other people and put other people before your, yourself in terms of like how you what you think is important and how you live. I think that many, many people are people that are like that and maybe have to think about the opposite way. But volunteer, try and make your work something that you don't hate what you do. Try and, if you leave every day and you're like, oh, I kind of did a fairly nice thing. You don't need to be curing cancer, but you know, if you're trying to help people, I really honestly think that the, the, the best that you feel is when you've made a difference in someone else's life and not your own. And I think that that has a massive knock-on effect on how you feel about yourself. I also think if when you're in the worst throes of depression and anxiety, you know, you're probably, you, it becomes a very self-involved experience and like taking yourself out of your own stressors and you know, listening to the problems of other people, even, I mean, even that alone sounds, I guess, totally. self-focused, but it is, you know, getting outside of yourself ultimately, because it's very, very isolating being an island. Yeah, completely. You're like stuck in your own brain, but when you go into someone else's brain, you're like, oh, we're quite similar yeah. in these. And then that's how, you know, we all help each other. Yeah. Totally. And that like you can't talk around your brain. And that's, that took me forever, yeah. Yeah. forever to, to realise. I, I, I think I came to anxiety quite late. And like, if you forgot it as a 13 year old, you probably know how to deal with it by that. But like, I was like, oh, <laughs> what is this? And I was like, I'm sure I can convince myself that all the things, and then it's like, Actually, you have like things that are happening to you, and your brain is very complicated. And like, 
and the physical aspect of it as well. Like yeah. So much, so much of the time when you have something like anxiety, you're actually you're placing thoughts and rationale onto a physical sensation in your body and looking for a reason that you feel that way. But yeah. in reality, you're probably just like, I don't know, some f there's an alarm. Bit. There's a fire alarm going off in your body when there's no fire. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really good metaphor. Yeah. I, that's that's. I did not coin that. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Does anyone else have anything to add? Um, covered pretty well. Yeah. I think in lockdown was pretty rough I mean, yeah. for everybody. The exercise, which I'd always overlooked in the past, because I was like, ah, what can I really do? Mm. My God. Yeah, it's Just going like a few runs a week for like 20 minutes. Sorting me out basically. Yeah. And help me kind of stay on track. Can, yeah, I, also, really can I also mention dogs? Yeah. If we're talking about mental yes. health, oh, yeah. of course. Any animal, really? Any, yeah, any That's animal. That's not like feral. <laughs> <laughs> but if you could tame a feral beast, you know, that'll probably pick up your self esteem, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's why, like, working here, we let dogs in. So there's always dogs on shift, and I'm like, everything <laughs> better. We have our regular it dogs, it's great. I even want a fox. I think fox is amazing. I think that's so cute. That's, that's, yeah. You don't One want the feral, bro. You don't want no, fox. Because like, oh, oh, he, 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 thought, he thought he could go and pet it when he was get, drunk. Get, like, a wee harness for it and stuff. I did get a tetanus shot, didn't he? Mad fits. So Good guy. The first oh. time I saw a fox was in Glasgow, to be fair. We don't have them in Perth. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Mm. Well, they're, they're probably there, but they're not and, street and walkers. In their natural habitat where they're yeah. happy yeah. and cannot have to like, forage for yeah, food I and mean, bins. Speaking yeah. about that, I've seen, exactly. seen a dead one at the other side of the motorway today. So. Oh. We can Jesus cut that out of the I thought gently exit the pure heavy mental health yeah. chat. Dead fox at the side of the motorway. Anywho, moving onwards. To de to actually, quickly, um, I was taking out my bins the other day, and was that like, another dead fox? No, ah. it was a dead pigeon, but it looked like it was just sitting. And oh I just like turned, I put the bin in the bin, no. and then I just looked, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, and it like ricocheted through all the terraces, and I was like, oh god. I had to phone just while we're on the dead animals. Um, I what a topic! <laughs> <laughs> I walked into my um, my bathroom, and clearly one of the neighbours had laid out like poison for a mouse, and the mouse was like. Like dying, and I phoned. I phoned the SSP, like the, the Protection of Animal Society, and they just in the phone were like, "What do you want me to do about this?" And I was like, "I, I don't know. Like, can you Ma help it?" Mouse CPR. And I was like, no, like this is this is not happening. And I had to just like. That's so funny. Put it you get like a defibrillator? Oh, like <laughs> I've I've genuine nightmares. <laughs> Yeah, well, speaking of not dead <laughs> animals, this is this is a, a story of a happy, happy ending. Oh, happy! Okay, let's go with where, the happy ending. Uh, you bring back from the dead? No, 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 no. <laughs> Basically, discover a mouse, which his name is Mister Mouse, um, in a flat. Mm -hmm. Spend three hours um, in a cupboard, just slowly taking everything out, put him in a humane trap, and drive him three miles, which is castle milk, basically, mm -hmm. and drop him off. So, I hope he's already. Basis right, for indie band admits to <laughs> murder fly tipping, yeah. at fly tipping rodents <laughs> into working class up of Glasgow. I heard, I heard the Castmonks had a really bad mouse outbreak in the yeah. house. It, yeah, <laughs> how they said you need, you need to drive been? three miles and drop. You're now responsible for the death of three thousand mouses. I did that. I love the West End. And I, took, I took one to Pollock Park. You get three thousand like, dead mouses in your name. That's a good mouses. Did you say mouses? Mouses. 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 Sorry, yeah, I've okay, got the cold. So I can't think properly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh -huh. away from uh, yeah. In conclusion, <laughs> exercise. Yeah. Exercise. Exercise is good. <laughs> also, also um, feeding yourself good stuff too. Oh, yes, like definitely. Like your stomach is eating, so connected eating, to your brain. Gut like, health. You have some chemistry. Probiotic. Rank, yeah. It's so good for you. It's good. Very good. Um, anyway, we'll move on from this. Uh, so, Duncan, this is for you. You co-run Queer History of Dance Music. Oh, yeah. Um, how did this originally come about, and how does it feel going from playing with Declan and the boys and then doing some funky queer hits? Well, I mean, I just love the centre of attention, so it all seems to go quite well together. <laughs> um, no, I mean, so, interestingly, so Amy, who I do Queer History of Dance Music, they went to uni with me and Declan as well, so we're all... We're all law graduates um, who, yeah, kind of, I get, and maybe the underpinning and the social construction of, you know, our reality is a part of it. But, I mean, I guess a lot of what I learned at uni was opening your eyes to, you know, queer theory as well. And that was, that was something that me and Amy kind of thought when we started the show was very much, you know, like, 
especially with dance music culture. So like to kind of summarize, it's basically just like a kind of like a history show talking about the history of queer rights and music that came along with it. Cause like club culture, underground club culture and like queer history and like revolution is very much all connected. And it's something that we kind of felt was very, I guess, discon it was a big disconnect with like modern dance music in a lot of places. Um, I think it has changed a lot in the last like five, six years, especially in Glasgow as well. Like Glasgow has like, has like got great queer nightlife and it always has as well, but it's definitely become like a lot bigger, which is, I guess, you know, a great thing. But we kind of started from that point of view. So like, you know, we started originally in sub-city Glasgow, um, you know, doing things like Stonewall history, the 70s, 80s, just picking a time period and doing them. But, you know, we've kind of, we've evolved, we've evolved to the point now where we'll get people, we'll interview people all the time and kind of have, you know, I guess that um, aspect to it too. So we're, yeah, busy. I mean, DJing live, I guess, is like, it's a very different style of performance to playing with a band because some of my favorite DJs are the ones that are like smiling, dancing, like high-fiving everyone in the front of the audience. Like Huni um, is one of my favorite DJs and he's the best for that because he'll just like hold up a record and just be like, this is my favorite album ever and just like high-five everyone. It's so good, yeah. But most DJs don't perform. It's very much like, face down whatever and I, again it's something that you see more and more people performing now which is great um but like when i when i've been djing it's been going well like in clubs or parties whatever i often kind of like i can't actually i could have to hold it back a wee bit but then i'm just like nah you always you're always performing and you're always you've always got them in your palm of your head hand no matter what you're doing as an artist um life's a stage life is a stage yeah, exactly and it's fun to see i like it when djs perform i think there's totally. more to it and when they have it, dancers too i'm like yeah. well that's it i think when people look like well i'll just be my own dancer but <laughs> i like it when when any artist looks like they're having fun is always important and it can be it can be either you know through crafting like something that's a perfect aesthetic for you to take to like i guess take in or you know you just look at i guess like four pals having a great time like both of those are great but yeah it's all a bit fun. It is supposed to be a bit fun, after all. Yeah, exactly. Music is fun. Music is hard. There we go. Um, so, I read um, during lockdown, you guys had like 150 songs written. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah. Was that similar to when you came to this album? Did you have that amount of like, <laughs> that catalogue? A lot of songs. I think do? what's, I think, so I'm, um, I write quite a lot, and I think that um, one day uh, I will get writer's block, and that will happen. And I think what the reason that I keep trying to write so much is in anticipation of that moment, just so you get a bit of material to go on. But when you write so much and you write constantly, I think what's really good is when people you trust that you're like, what do we think of these ones? And what was quite good is that I think like there was a few kind of slight disagreements in what ones, but pretty much we were all pretty happy with like these ten being the ten. There was one called C that we we took, and it was more yeah. of a it was more a producer than us that we. But but oh, yeah. it's yeah. like I think he probably made the right call for this album. Yeah. I really like the song that didn't make this album, and it will be something. Mm. But the ten songs that we ended up with, I think, were were at least eight of them were in all of our like all there of was, our top was, tens, pretty much. There was a few songs um, that we definitely. I think once someone else may also made the case for them in a good way, yeah. we all kind of got behind as well. Like yeah. the song, I won't name it because you know I don't want to give any spoilers away. Well, for we the can album. give it its demo name. So compromise was his compromise demo name. You weren't, you weren't as big on that, Murray, until we got it properly no. mixed and mastered, and then it was it. Right, okay. And then it got it back. You're like, oh, yeah. Okay. The one I was thinking of was kinda, which I think the name might have changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, is. Um, as you might describe, like I think the perfect description for that song is "Crying on the Dance Floor," which is yeah, some of my favourite yeah, yeah. sad disco. So yeah. it's very much in that vein. That was one I think Ben fought the most for. That yeah. was one that yeah, was like maybe like not in would like. not in all of yeah. our. Not I think it was only maybe in your list. I, I had it in mind. I think it might have just been me and Ben. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. you just made the right argument, and it the same with the best choice. King of my head, King of my head was a maybe for me, yeah. and I think now it's probably mm. top. Three, my yeah. favourite. It's yeah. hard to say. It's hard because it's. It this this shows that you're wrong so quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> got a bad track record. <laughs> I was like, Ben, we, we have like with, with the waiting scenario, the waiting fiasco. Where oh, we oh, fought yeah. so hard we for a song. We don't get, talk about the great waiting yeah, fiasco. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> I think it's really it's really hard to. So that was what, a disgrace, what's, by what's, the way. What's good is that I think that there's quite a see because I'll write them, come to use, and then they'll become a song. And I'll and what's good about the way that I think we work is that like it's quite you can kind of say what you actually think about the songs and 
I think it probably pushes all of it towards having the ones that have the most like kind of broad, not broad appeal, but the, the most going for them. Mm. Broad appeal is the wrong word to use, but the most going for them and that like you'll be listening out for where there's space to have like a per something percussive happening or a groove. Um, and, and each of us probably have our own thing that we're focusing in on. Mm. So it was genuinely, for the first album, we did like a World Cup of tunes. I, I don't think we did that for this one, but there was like a Google Drive that was just getting like way out of hand. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about that was that that was what we sent to Luca, our producer. Um, and that was what got him wanting to, to work with us, was just all these demos that, I, that you'd poured, you know, hours into of me at four in the morning, waking my poor partner up by going like, ah, and then, ah, and then, ah, and just harking around and going, I'm really happy that you're creating stuff. I have work at nine. Can you please maybe like do keys now or maybe yeah. <laughs> and just something, something that isn't you making physical noise and then maybe do that in the morning. So it was good that all of this stuff that I was quite excited by. It's always good as well as like to, to, to have other people be excited about the stuff you're excited at. Because like it's dead easy to get pure crest ball with music. I'm sure everyone that's made music has felt that, that way where you're buzzing about something and just you don't get the same reaction off people that you want. So. When we were creating this album, um, it was really good to have people go, oh, that's, that's class, like, oh, oh, that's, that's so good. And then, I mean, the, like, First and All, for example, had no bass in it whatsoever, because uh, I didn't have a bass at the time, and I sent, uh, this a song that's on the album, sorry, I'm saying First and All, if anyone other than the four of us has a clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah, First and All, yeah, yeah, yeah. A song on the album that will come out had no space for, and then, like, it, because I didn't have a bass, there's all this space for you to put what I think is probably your best song. Like, you've, you've done great work and loads of stuff, but I, I really love the, the bass in First to Know. And like that thing of going, oh, I can do that there. Oh, I can add that there. Oh, I can do that. And all of us have had that kind of moment in each song where someone gets to, to really shine. Yeah. Um, so I think that this album <coughs> probably shows everyone off in a really good way that it becomes like less a just about, for example, like just lyrics or just a big chorus or whatever. I think there's like quite a lot of layers to this, and, and yeah. Um, I don't know what question you asked me. I've been talking for quite a while. The here, album, so I'm like, excitement. I but I also, <laughs> I will say quite clearly, like, I, to talk about our songwriting process as well, like, we have a lot, in terms of our music taste, there's a lot of crossover, but we all do in many ways have quite distinctive tastes too. There's a lot of things that want, we all have songs and artists that we put on in a tour van that the other, everyone else will absolutely despise yeah you too um, give, give me an example to be yeah. fair to be, they, but then yours are totally you. wrong about, you, about you hardcore Murray, punk you and Murray and have never ever been in the front between seat between Duncan and the front seat it's, it's awful. like it's awful hardcore music yeah oh, pop gosh. punk yep. but all of our other <laughs> to be fair pop punk <laughs> and, okay maybe just me pop punk. Yeah, I don't like pop punk but I do love <gasps> you hardcore do a bit. what is it Midwest emo is that what you're all yeah. I don't even know I don't know what that is but it's Midwest emo Midwest emo is we don't play Midwest emo Midwest emo is a TikTok phase right okay don't do not at me, do not at me. What even is it's it? like sad math rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, so like American yeah. football. Made by yeah, Gen Z, yeah, 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 essentially, yeah. 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 American American football are the daddies. Okay, but you guys listen. Like, um, you guys like news. I, I, so I, 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 exactly. I would say you get an embarrassing thing. Me and Ben would put on. Of course, uh, not embarrassing. Well, actually, even even we wouldn't even really put news on to be honest. Ben's got like two albums he plays. Yeah, Ben's got Antidotes Ben's, don't, by don't, Foles don't you, and Battle Los Angeles. Do Ben's music taste at the service. <laughs> Ben's the reason I've got a good music taste. That guy started listening to Six Music when we like 40 I didn't say it was bad. I like those albums a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say I have the most uncultured music taste. Ever. Yeah, I would say that's probably yeah, yeah, yeah. through uh, like southern, oh, Jesus, like the fucking modern America. Country, I love country music too. Oh, country God. face. He bought a Texas yeah. state flag. Please, yeah. maybe, maybe we cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> like how people, how people like a feel Texas about state it. flag, and I hung it outside my window during COVID. We all <laughs> coped in different ways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He would turn up to every Zoom call that we'd be on. We like all of our pals and that, just kind of getting through it, and just would ruin it by you, playing, playing cowboy country, hat, wearing a cowboy hat, hat and playing country music. Oh Luke Holmes was a big feature of your like, life. Yeah, yeah. You whoever gets you, love, you love, by, whoever helps you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you like you like the country. That people that like country hate. People that like country hate the country. You like. Well, I don't know if that's true because he's been winning a lot of awards at the country awards, <laughs> and. <laughs> if he, the size of venues he plays is insane. I'm sure he's very popular. Yeah, country but music is quite big. Like, uh, it's look the, at it's the most bizarre pop, thing. Yeah, no, but but it's, it's definitely country. We, we stand anti-hero. I love, I love Dolly Parton. I love Chris Christopherson. I love Willie Nelson. All oh, that stuff's great. But you're big, like <laughs> I'm gonna ride my pickup yeah, uh, truck to the. I'll only listen if it's about beer, kind of trucks, uh, like fixing cars. <laughs> 
Yeah, that there's sort kind of, of like a it's sexual. Good lyrics there, you know. It's got really to be about yeah. those subjects, or I'm not interested. <laughs> there's a sexualisation of sort of, of trucks and vehicles <laughs> that that yeah. seem a little bit odd to me, but an 18 wheeler. Because you don't drive. Because yeah, 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 you don't yeah, drive. Yeah. So. What a yuck you're young, and bro. Like about, they're always talking about like <laughs> driving long hours to get back to their baby. Yeah, that is. Trucking yeah. music. And the baby's another car. That they're driving so it is. Back to. Yeah. <laughs> Got in a it's car originally to and make it. And it could be like a truck or like a Mustang yeah. or like a Chevy. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Something it's, like that. It is for Solid. Good old country music. Yes. Right. Um, we are now going to start our game, which cool. is called Decadence. Excellent. Um, so the theme is we're living in a decadent era of the late 15th century. Morals and cultural standards are out the window. So. Um, our first question is, who brings what to the decadent feast? And you can go. I like cooking, so I'm, I, I'll, I'll, cover, I'll cover food. I made, a, I made a six cheese mac and cheese once. Oh. And that's decadent. Six cheese. That's, 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 insane. that's insane. What cheeses? I think it was like uh, Gruyere, cheddar, parmesan, mozzarella, uh, manchego, oh. and one that I can't remember. Um, but we ate three bites of it and fell asleep for like <laughs> five hours. Oh it was God. just like the, the ca- how dense and ca- like it was just your entire Ultimate calorie stodge, count yeah. in one bite, and it was brilliant. But it was like you know, like tablet, where you're yeah. like one bite is the best thing ever. If I have three or four bites of that, I feel like my teeth are going to fall out. Mm. It was kind of that, but with savoury. But it was it was great. So I'll, I'll cook. I, I, I'll cook a decadent meal. Do we all have to bring a meal? Is that? No, it's no, like no, a pot. Well, you could make a potluck. We can make it a potluck. Pot I feel like when you so. say food and it's a feast, there's not much else for us to do. No, but you could bring the. <laughs> I'll bring the, the, the ale. You could have the, decadent. The drink the, the ale. The ale. Yeah, you can bring the ale. Like, uh, or I'll like bring. Um, 42% ale. Yeah, it's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> I'll bring the Reformation. How about that? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yes. you, you get biblical on us. <laughs> the only thing I know from that. Yeah. yeah. You're not a particularly decadent man, Ben. You're a quite a, a humble guy. You bring can, the candles. Yeah. Yeah. But it's low key. I uh, yeah. can't really, yeah. We'll not do decadence. What about, okay. um, what about fire f- uh, loot music? <laughs> loot, loot rappers? The DJ set. <laughs> Fucking Martin for the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. We're talking um, about the 15th century here. It's, it's who in the group is the peasant? <laughs> Peasant. The peasant. Yeah, if you were to nominate someone in this group, who's the peasant out of you all? I don't... It's not I don't, you. That's I don't, straight, straight off the bat, it's not you. Well, I was going to say I don't believe in feudalism, <laughs> but if we're, if we're judging, then... We're, we're in me. the 15th century here, OK? I think it's me, It'd probably, like at the 40s. I think, I think you're probably the peasant. Uh, it's me if it's the yeah, 15th yeah, it's century, yeah. it's yeah. all of us. I'm really, I'm, Realistically. I'm leading a peasant yeah, uprising, and the three of them are, are oh. landowners. <laughs> and you'll be, and you'll be oh, quashed. Fuck. But you're getting, you're, you're, get, you're getting quashed yeah, within days. Right, who's the king, or like the royalty in the group? I'll take Duncan, that one. Duncan, Duncan. Just because yeah. I'm a legend. Easy. Who's legend. the jester? Murray. <laughs> yeah. I see that. <laughs> who works at IKEA? Kill jester. <laughs> <laughs> um, who would win a sword fight? Let's put you guys against <laughs> each other. Um, uh, uh, I'd back myself. The two biggest yeah. Star Wars fans. Star Wars fans. Star Wars fans. Star Wars fans. Star War fans. <laughs> you and Ben. <laughs> yeah. That says to me the most uh, experience with lightsabers I'll give Ben that one swords. then Ben backs himself but a lightsaber I wouldn't know is if he backs himself lighter. I'll give you that one. Oh, right oh, so like swords are quite weighty yeah. so you need to have a good uh, ben, I'd probably say swing you, yeah, just be the bigger man you're I'll probably stronger yeah. I'm happy with that yeah. I, 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 you, back, you back you what's I don't I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd yeah I'd chuck in this matter <laughs> <laughs> you've won but for yeah. the sake of the game we'll go we'll go myself I agree I think, right. I think you've got as good a chance than any of us don't right. put yourself down like that out of the group who has the fanciest wardrobe <laughs> Duncan was probably you in it yeah. Yeah. Duncan yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, who has the worst like that's really harsh right I don't think I'll, any I'll, of us we're about to point <laughs> <the> <laughs> <here>. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think anyone of us dresses badly but <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have our moments I think the least bothered about fashion is Ben yeah. Even though you dress well, I think you're you're the least bothered about it. Is that is yeah, that yeah, no, that's, that's completely well, we, fair. There's yeah. a, as a Ben Corlett, Corlett, Ben Corlett's Ben Corlett original quote was, "I don't really, I don't really, a quote, a quote <laughs> I don't really understand shoes." Yeah, it was a Ben. I quote. don't understand shoes. He's also said the word shoes and the concept of shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Just, but yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, Murray wears Birkenstocks, so I, I would have put Murray down for this one. We had we we, 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 wore, uh, we, we wore a Nakamura Japan top to most of our most of our first tour so, yeah. with them. Like two tours ago, I wore like the Birkenstocks for every gig, like morning as well. Wake up, Birkenstocks. 
Lunch, Birkenstocks. Gang, Birkenstocks. Wake up, Birkenstocks. Hey, what's the point of shoes? Making Do you still wear them in winter? Yeah. Oh, God. Just put the socks, it's fine. You know, I won't judge, it's safe space. Birkenstocks. Anyway. Socks. <laughs> Out of the group, socks, who yeah. would get their head beheaded? Who would end up being that guy? Uh, well, like committing crime to yeah you'd be yeah right. yeah if I'm, uh, if, I'm, if I'm leading a peasant up right yeah it's, it's gonna be that's yeah. ending one of two ways either you're all getting beheaded or I'm getting beheaded yeah so. oh. it's gonna be you yeah. history's on our side <laughs> yeah, yeah it really is sadly. Um, whose morals are easily swayed uh, <laughs> it, depends. it depends what you mean by that I suppose I'm, gonna say, I'm just going to say Murray we'll say Murray we'll say Murray but we're not going to give any detail watch it no, 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 no detail I, I yeah. nice, but yeah I think I think that Depend, yeah we're, we, we I've, can, seen, we can I've seen you swear oh no that's not happening and then sort of five minutes later that happens so I think that you may have yeah. Maybe the least willpower, maybe? Well, nah, because in different ways, it's hard to tell. Yeah. It, that's not, it's not all one way or the other. I think all of us are. Wait, are who's like William Power? I've been pure power so, so many times. times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, final question. Who's the most decadent in the group? Um, can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a sentence. <laughs> uh, so excess, like the, the sort of someone that likes the finer things. Yeah. I probably oh. think the more maybe you. To me, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I'll take I would that. go Duncan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not materialistic, but materialistic. No, no, but just way. do you like? I'm not nice materialistic, stuff? but I'll, yeah, you like nice stuff. Like nice things. It's not bad. Yeah. I mean, I'm wearing glitter in my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I noticed that. It's really nice. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah, looks good, man. Well, that's us done our game Woo. and ending who, who, who our won? interview. <laughs> Is it was a prize? Point, I don't know, money, money not lost, a prize. I feel. Uh, no, yeah. um, you guys could let me know what 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 one did you like the best out of the board? Like Cloud City. I was surprised. Like I don't oh, really like Cloud really Beer. Cloud Beer. That was pretty nice. Yeah. I really like this one. Which that is the, was Disco. Yeah, Disco. Yes. Seven Four Peaks. Class. Second. Seven one? Peaks. That's, the other second. That's one for me. Oh, Are quickly great. tasting them now? The two either side. The middle ones I wasn't as keen on. Yeah. Two either side were nice. Yeah. What one's that? That's where, the where did you just pull that from? Disco. That, yeah, that's Disco, the oh, mango. Uh, that's quite popular and the, cl the Cloud City. Yeah, Cloud City, probably. Yeah, because that just moved on to our like, main range oh, because nice. it just was selling, selling so fast. But yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for a lot. Thank you. Lovely Cheers. Tonight. Thanks very much. Yes, thank and you. thank you for answering questions and being here. Um, we've Ooh. really appreciated it. Thanks and for having us. Best of luck for the rest of this year. It's, you're going to smash it. Woo. It's going to be great. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Yeah, check out Declan Welsh and Decadent West live session. Now live on YouTube by Trico, and thank you, and good night. <laughs>